What's up, everybody? Um, want to come at you right now with a little story, just because I have the extra time to do it. Um, I wanted to tell you a little story about my journey, about where it started, where I'm at, how Double R was born, and then I got a, um, some pretty cool news at the end. So, in a nutshell, five years old, always wanted to be a public address announcer, play-by-play -play announcer of some sort. Um, I idolized uh, David Courtney of the Angels, uh, Lawrence Tanner of the Do of the Lakers, and uh, of course Harry Carey and Chick Hearns were also my my idols growing up. Uh, I've always wanted to do announcing play by play. I've always loved sports and Chris Berman's the goat, you know stuff like that. So I started my journey a little bit before uh, 2016, I believe it was. Um, as a kid, I did a couple little league games, so that's about it. I uh, got to meet David Courtney at age 13, met a couple other people um, as well in the industry, Bill McDonald when I worked at Angels originally. Um, got, got to learn a lot from them, Alex Curry, you know, Trent Rush, you know, whoever I could talk to, just got some new uh, information from them, and it was pretty cool. So life dealt me a curveball, as you all know, and while dealing with that curveball, I decided to go back to school. And I went to the Academy of Radio and Television Broadcasting, shout out to ACAD and KBJ8, um, where I learned literally everything that I know. I have so many people that trained me over there that are in the business from Calypso Ronda to Maggie Mayfield, to Mario Toscano, Ruben J. Pena, you know, Fredo Cervantes, all doing big things and so many, many, so many more that I have learned from. And I just wanna thank them for helping me out in my journey and never giving up on me and just uh, giving me a chance to also be a part of um, other students came up when I became a counselor, same thing. Um, a lot of those people really pushed me to do what, what it is that I do now. Um, over at the Academy, I did my podcast for two years, The Retro Runway, which was a music variety show. And we touched a lot of lives with that. And that was a lot of fun. And then we opened up Bats, Balls and Belts, um, started that show on a napkin one day. I was Angel Stadium working a day shift. Sorry, Brian Sanders. Um, <laughs> I was riding on a napkin. They started a show, and then, uh, you know, 100 shows later, you know, there we were. But just things were missing. I wasn't getting that inter international exposure that I really wanted, and I wanted some professional, you know, wanted to work next to a professional. And I was given that opportunity one day when a friend told me, why don't you hit up Phil Hewlett? I hit up Phil Hewlett. And he's also one of my idols, you know, I mean, the voice of the Anaheim Ducks. I got a lot, lots of duck games and I just absolutely love this man right here. This man, this man <laughs> taught me so much. And he was like a father figure, both on air and off and still is to me. He's a great mentor. And I went in as a student, just sitting behind the glass with, you know, the Mike Stark, who I also learned a lot from um and just took notes took notes took notes did some camera work whatever but then I asked Phil one day and I said Phil you know am I wasting my time doing this or should I pursue more and he told me just show up the next week so I showed up the next week and there's a chair waiting for me I got to sit in on the Phil Hewlett and Friends show and I even got to do a couple lines a couple weeks later intern Ricky was born and uh two years later I was with the crew, got to meet everybody, Mike Walters, you know, Kelly Sood, Kelly Jones, to all these amazing, awesome people that I'm friends with now that have helped me in my journey to get where I am. So thank you to Phil Hewlett and Friends Show. I absolutely loved being on the FAF show. I can't wait to have a reunion show and be able to go back to them, but I owe my radio life to this dude right here. He taught me more than people even know but even with that said, I still had something missing, still had something missing. I always wanted to be on music radio. You know, Phil had done it as well, and he's done news, and he's done some other things, and I wanted to be on music radio. So then I just sent out hundreds and hundreds of demos, and I got a call back from 96.7 KCAL Rocks. And man, what a journey that has been. That's when the official double R was born. Um, Daryl was an amazing... PD. He's so friendly. He's so helpful. He always backed me in everything that I did. And I screwed up a lot, let's be real. And, but it was a great learning experience, you know, got to do all the cool remotes that we did. Um, and just being around the awesome listeners and who I'm friends with now, a lot of them, 
um, they just change your life. They just do, no matter what it is you're doing um, as a DJ on air, you never know what you're going to experience. You never know who you're going to experience. You never know what you're going to do. I've had times where I've saved lives by giving out the suicide hotline. I've had times where I've made listeners cry because they just couldn't afford to take their kid to this concert and they won tickets, you know, just little things like that. And just the music, the music, you get lost in the music and it's just something you can't explain. You have to experience it. So thank you to 96.7 KCAL Rocks. I absolutely love you guys for everything that you've done for me. Um, but yet I still, there's still more I wanted to do. I wanted to get into sports. I've always wanted to get into sports and that door opened up when the Oxnard Orcas came calling, my buddy Ferran Derzier, the owner of the Oxnard Orcas, came calling. He said, hey, bro, I've known you for a long time. Let's do this. Jump in with us. And, and I grabbed my buddy Gilbert A. Plus Asensio. And hopefully he'll still be my partner. We'll see. We don't know yet. But the American Basketball Association accepted the Oxnard Orcas. Um, unfortunately, we had the pandemic and we weren't able to do the season this last year but that was a blessing in disguise because I got to interview so many players you know over 40 players that we've interviewed so far and I've got to meet even more just at basketball games and events and we did a pillow drive and you know I just it's been awesome and I can't wait to go be the play-by-play -play or PA announcer we don't know yet for the uh brand new ABA team the Oxnard Orcas and shout out to every single one of them, Drewski, you know, Flash, Meezy, and the whole crew. I absolutely love you guys, Buddha. I've learned so much from you and about you. And you guys have opened up so many doors for me. And I appreciate that so much. Um, but from there, we decided to expand. Um, we didn't have the season. I kept interviewing players, but I also wanted to do stuff from the Drew. I wanted to do stuff from open tournaments. I wanted to do stuff from the girls and so much other things as well and that's when let me get out of the way here all sports media team was born we, we had a meeting between our oxnard Me orcas media team and we decided to change our names to all sports media team so that we can do all sports we've interviewed mainly basketball and who knows something else might open up later um but we have all sports media team and that's when i opened up um we kept going with our show double dribble we did about 25 shows with the orcas exclusively orcas and then from 26 to now which we're now at 43 starting next week um, we've done all sports media team we've done people from egypt we've done people from connecticut we've done people from right here in la you know socal norcal you know just the works uh drew league champions vbl champions oh man it's been a, a freaking blast We've got to work the VBL. We won a VBL championship, a P4E did, and I, I did the jump that everybody remembers. And it was embarrassing, but it was absolutely awesome. Then we decided, me, George, and a couple of the other guys, decided to do Triple B 2.0. We did Triple B 2.0, um, which was just Bats, Balls, and Belts 2000. You know, we, we revamped Triple B. Uh, and we did cover all sports for a couple months, and it, it just... It wasn't working out the way that we felt. We might bring it back. Who knows? But we had fun with that as well. The reason I'm telling you all this is sometimes things happen. Because after Triple V 2.0, we dropped a couple shows. Unfortunately, I got furloughed because of the pandemic. Um, and then I finally got officially furloughed from 96.7 KKL Rocks. I haven't been there in a while. And I absolutely miss them, miss my, my listeners. But I really got to focus on my sports. Um anchoring my sports and an analysts, my sports interviewing and all that. And just little details I wanted to practice on and things like that. And then I just put my name out there. I made all kinds of crazy demos um, and I sent them out. I sent them out. I've got, I got feedback from a couple places, you know, some were like, Oh, we're interested, but we're not open or we're not having because of the pandemic, you know, and I was super bummed. I was about to break. And then um, I talked to a couple other teams and we talked it over and they were very interested, which I thought was pretty cool. And they made a call back right away, which I respect the hell out of. They didn't just leave me hanging. Um, they called me back and they said, okay, we're looking for a, PA, a possible PA announcer. And I said, oh my God, you know, that's my dream. Absolutely. That would be so much fun. And um, we talked about how we can go about doing this. And then they said, okay, well, I got to talk to the other owners and stuff like that. So starting this summer, in June, you guys are going to have to head down to San Diego because your boy right here is going to be doing sideline reporting. Sideline reporting. 
sideline reporting, play-by-play, -play, and more than likely doing some TA work for the um, Ultimate Disc League and the San Diego Growlers. I'm so freaking excited for this. Um, I'm kind of nervous, but with nerves comes better excitement. It sometimes makes you a better performer. So head down to San Diego this summer. Y'all going to come see me with the San Diego Growlers of the Ultimate Disc League. If you don't know what that is, check it out on YouTube. They are the defending uh, Western Division champions, and it's going to be awesome to join the family. So thank you so much, and I hope you guys head down to San Diego to check it out. Go Growlers.